Welcome to Candid Conversation number 1079. We've been talking about Israel with the supposed war going on with Israel and Hamas going on. Um, we've been talking about how that's not prophecy being fulfilled. It's not um, God doing anything there because God is not operating in that way today. And so today I want to talk about the the two different programs, the main two different programs in the Word of God, prophecy versus mystery. When God started the nation of Israel with Abram in Genesis chapter 12, he started it with a bunch of promises. He says, I'm going to make of you a great nation. I'm going to bless the nations of the world in you. Um, curse those who curse you. Bless those who bless you. I'm going to give you the land. And in Genesis 15, at the end of the chapter, he gives the boundaries of the land. He puts them under a he puts them under a fleshly covenant under Moses, and then there's all these promises because Israel is in unbelief. So then God says, "Okay, well I'll give you, you know, if you turn to me, then." And He gives them basically a timeline of what will happen. They turn away from Him. They don't serve Him. So then they have to go through the times of the Gentiles, in uh, starting with the Babylonian captivity. Uh, in Daniel there and he tells Daniel says well this is what the times of the Gentiles is going to be 490 years here of starting with Babylon as the ruling nation then going to um, Medes and Persians and then the Greece and then Rome and then eventually of course there's a gap there what's happening today but then you've got the uh, Antichrist and his kingdom and there are all these things to look for. In Matthew 24, Jesus says, these are the signs of the end. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And he mentions things that will happen. And he says, these are the beginning of sorrows. And you can go to Revelation 6 and you can see the seals there. And the first four seals there relate to the first half or the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. And then you can see the last seals and the seven trumpet judgments and the seven vile judgments. And you can see those things also mentioned to some extent in Matthew 24. And then you can see immediately after the tribulation, uh, then the sun's going to turn dark, the moon turn into blood, the stars will fall from the sky. So you've got all of these things, uh, prophetic events that will happen, and there is a timeline for all of this. But what ends up happening, as we talked about last time, is that due to Israel being in unbelief, the Holy Ghost through Stephen in Acts 7, 51 says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, as your fathers resist the Holy Ghost, so do ye. So you see that um, Israel continues in a status of unbelief throughout their history. And so then you see Stephen says twice, Acts 7, 54 and 55, he says, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Not sitting, but standing. And standing, according to Isaiah 3, 13, says, The Lord stands, standeth to judge and to plead with his people. James 5, the judge stands before the door. So you've got uh, God bringing judgment upon Israel, setting them aside as a nation. There declare, lo am I, Hosea 1, 9. And last time I said Hosea 1, 10, but I looked it up, it's Hosea 1, 9. There declare, lo am I, that you are not my people and I am not your God. And that's what's going on today. And so today you've got something where God starts something new with Paul. We talked about how last time Revelation 5 says that Israel is going to be kings and priests upon the earth. Psalm 48 says uh, that Mount Zion, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The kingdom for Israel is on the earth because all nations are blessed. All the families of the earth are blessed in Israel by blessing Israel. And then they're cursed if they curse Israel. And then they get to rule, uh, they get to be on uh, in Jesus' kingdom on the earth, God's kingdom on the earth. But then when you get to Paul, Paul says in Philippians 3.20 that our conversation is in heaven. He says in Ephesians 1.3, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He says in Ephesians 2.5 and 6 
that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. He says in Colossians 3, 3, to set your affection on, th I'm sorry, Colossians 3, 2, he says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Why? For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And that Christ is our life. So you have all these indications in Paul's epistles that he's talking about heavenly things. When you look in what Peter said in Acts 3, 19 through 21, he said, Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of God and he shall send Jesus Christ. Um, and it says that uh, in verse 21 that these things that Peter is talking about have been talked about by God's holy prophets since the world began. But in, Rev in Romans 16.25, in Romans 16.25, Paul says that he is preaching the revelation of Jesus. He's preaching Jesus Christ. Um, that he may be established by the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. So in Acts 3.21, Peter says what he is preaching is something that has been preached by the mouth of all God's holy prophets since the world began. And in Romans 16, 25, Paul says that he is preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which is kept secret since the world began. Three times in Paul's epistles, Romans 2, Romans 16, and 2 Timothy 2, Paul says, this is my gospel that I am preaching. It's a gospel committed unto him. He says in Galatians 1, 11 and 12, that the gospel that he preaches is not received, he did not receive it of man, neither was he taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So he is preaching the revelation of Jesus Christ, according to the, re the gospel from Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. He says in 1 Corinthians 9, he says, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 3.1, he talks about the dispensation of grace. He says that it was kept secret since the world began. He says that um, in Ephesians 3.9, he said it was hid in God. And so you got all these indications here. Colossians 1.25, he says he is preaching the mystery to fulfill the word of God. Um, these things were kept secret, but Ephesians 1.8 says that God hath abounded toward us now in all wisdom and prudence. So you got all these indications from Paul's epistles that what he is preaching is a different message than what Peter preached. Uh, they had the, because of this different message, they had the Jerusalem Council in Acts chapter 15. And from there it was determined, according to Galatians 2, that Peter would preach that the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter and the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto Paul. And so Peter and them would continue to go to the circumcision, which is where Jesus Christ called them to, and that Paul would go to the uncircumcision or the heathen or unbelievers. And when you see when Peter, when Paul talks about things, uh, you don't see anything in Romans through Philemon about you know events that uh, is going to take place. Now he does mention Day of the Lord in Second Thessalonians. Um, and 1 Thessalonians 5, I should say, but um, when it comes to things that we will be a part of, he does not mention any prophecy being fulfilled. He says basically the only event that is prophesied for the dispensation of grace is the, um, the rapture of the church, and he refers to that in 1 Corinthians 15, as a mystery, behold, I show unto you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. And the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And, and so he says, there is an event for us in the dispensation of grace. It is the rapture or the catching up or catching away of the body of Christ to go into heaven because we are part of heavenly places. I mentioned last time that 1 Thessalonians 4 says, again, talking about that rapture, it says that we will be caught up and we will meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Because our home is in heavenly places, we are raptured up or we go to heaven and meet the Lord in the air. The Lord does not come to the earth. He comes in the earth's atmosphere and we meet him in the clouds. And then we are forever with the Lord in heaven. But for Israel, we're told in Zechariah that his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, 
We're told in Revelation 19 that he comes on riding a white horse with a sword proceeding out of his mouth. There's no white horse, there's no sword mentioned in the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4 or 1 Corinthians 15. And so then when he comes to the earth, in Revelation 19 at his second coming, he's coming on that white horse and he's coming to uh, destroy uh, Satan's forces, the Antichrist and his forces in the battle of Armageddon. So he comes to the earth for destruction, which makes sense because Satan is the god of this world. And so he has to destroy the things, Satan's lie program and the things of this earth in order to establish God's kingdom on earth. So um, all of that tells you then is that what, what Paul is speaking, which starts in Acts 9 and then which concludes at the rapture of the body of Christ, then that is all a mystery. So when it comes to what we're talking about with Israel, that's why Hosea 1, 9 says that Israel today is low am I, not my people. Israel is not my people, I will not be their God. Granted, Israel can trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin, but as we talked about last time, then they have eternal life in heavenly places, not on the earth. There, you don't have end time events mentioned by uh, Paul. You have uh, the mystery, is uh, the rapture is mentioned of the body of Christ. He does say in 2 Timothy 3 that in the end times of the dispensation of grace, perilous times shall come. But, uh, you know, men be lovers of themselves, boasters, they have a form of godliness, ever learning, never able to come into the knowledge of the truth, deceiving people. But you can see elements of that throughout the last 2,000 years. It's just it's going to get worse toward the end. And it does seem like that's what's going on today. But um, you don't have specific timelines. With Israel, it is, he told Daniel, 70 weeks or 490 years. And we got the first 49-year period. Then we got another 434 years. And then Messiah is going to be crucified. Then there's going to be a gap. But then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period. That starts with the Antichrist making a covenant with Israel. And when you read Revelation, for example, you'll see time markers. The two witnesses are there the first half of the tribulation period. The false prophet is there the last half of the tribulation period. The mark of the beast, the image of the beast, last half of the tribulation period. Uh, daily sacrifices and worshiping in the temple, first half of the tribulation period. Uh, the the 144,000 Jews sealed, Revelation 7, at the end of the first half of the tribulation period. Uh, so you got all these time markers, especially when it comes to tribulation, first half, last half. Uh, specific years and dates mentioned, whereas you don't have that in the, pro in the mystery program today. So what does that mean? It means that prophecy is not being fulfilled today. Now, I do know that once the rapture takes place, then Israel's program will resume and prophecy will be fulfilled. And I know that in that gap in Daniel 9, a prophecy program or Israel's program was put on hold after the 69th week was completed because it was after the 69th week that Messiah was cut off or crucified. And then the 70th week begins with the, the seven-year covenant that nation of Israel makes with the Antichrist. So there are things that happen in that gap. So I know that once the, um, the rapture takes place and Israel's program then resumes, it's going to resume in that gap because that's where it left off. And there's things that have to happen in that gap, specifically a lot of the stuff in Daniel 11. But then once those events are done, then there can be the seven-year covenant with the Antichrist and um, the, uh, and that 70th week then of Daniel, the tribulation period starts. So while those things are not happening today because we're in a mystery, Paul says Romans 16, 25, preaching to Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And uh, Ephesians 3, he says, I'm showing you the mystery which was kept secret. Um, he says it was hid in God, Ephesians 3, 9. In Colossians 1, he says he's given the, the dispensation of the mystery. Uh, you got, it's everything about mystery for Paul 
it's something that was now revealed to him. He says, the gospel I preach, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is atonement for sin. You won't find that until it was given to me by revelation of Jesus Christ. When Ananias came to him in Acts 9, called him Brother Saul, he didn't give him the Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for sin. He gave him repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And that's exactly what happened there. The, uh, the mystery gospel of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for sin was hid in God until revealed to Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 9, probably around verse 22 to verse 23. Now they knew of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection starting in Matthew 16 is when Jesus started to reveal it to his apostles at the end of his earthly ministry. Uh, but then when they did, and, but they didn't understand it. And then once they understood it in Acts chapter 2, you see it preaches bad news. Ye men of Israel, ye have by wicked hands have taken and crucified and slain uh, the Christ. Uh, you are subject to judgment. This same Jesus whom ye have crucified, God hath raised up, and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and he has been made Lord, both Lord and Christ. You're in a lot of trouble. You see in Acts 2.37, the question, what shall we do? They were pricked to their heart, and they're asking, what shall we do about this? It wasn't preached as good news, it was preached as bad news. And so, the, and so all this information that Paul had was a mystery it was kept secret so what that means then is prophecy is not being fulfilled today now granted because once the rapture takes place israel's program resumes it resumes at the at hand phase of the kingdom john the baptist jesus both preached matthew 3 2 matthew 4 16 17 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand so you had the at hand phase of the kingdom uh going on there with uh, Jesus and John the Baptist with Peter and Acts 2 and they'll be back in the at hand phase and then there are all these prophetic events that have to happen Romans 9 says the Lord will make a short work he will cut it short in righteousness so it's not going to be another 2,000 years after the rapture before Israel is saved it's gonna be a whole lot shorter than that so because of that the stage does have to be set for that for example uh, Revelation 13 mentions that the image of the beast that they um, that the image can cause people to be killed if it doesn't bow down to the image. It's an inanimate object that is able to kill people. Um, how does it do it? Well, probably with artificial intelligence AI. Uh, you bring life to an image. Then um, the mark of the beast. Through if you don't have the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell in the in the Antichrist kingdom. So. Um, how does that work? You get the mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Well, the way it works then is through a probably a computer chip, through technology, to where they can store money or social credits or green, whatever they're going to call it. They can store it in that chip. And so then you could, and if you don't take the mark, then you don't have the ability to buy or sell. You don't have the digital currency that's required in the Antichrist kingdom. So you can see from the Revelation events that you do have to have technology. And we can see today the AI technology, the ability to implant computer chip in somebody's hand or in their forehead. So we can see that the stage is being set for the prophetic program to continue. But prophecy is not actually being fulfilled today. So when Israel and Hamas are going at it and whatever's going on there, whatever they're doing, uh, has nothing to do with any prophecy because the prophecy has been put on hold until the rapture of the body of Christ. Then all Israel will be saved, Romans 11:26, and so then the prophecy program resumes and you've got the events in Daniel 11 specifically that have to take place, the gap events in Daniel 9:26, and then finally all that ushers in the Antichrist signing the seven-year covenant with Israel, and then you got the seven-year tribulation period with all those events taking place. And all that is going to be a short work, according to Romans 9, around verse 26 or so, I don't know, somewhere. No, it's probably later. It's probably like verse 33 or so. So all of that then means that 
while there is no prophecy being fulfilled today, the stage would have to be set, and it seems like the stage is set already. But actually, events, Jesus says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, but don't be troubled, Matthew 24. False Christ will arise and deceive many. Those things are not happening today. Yes, there are wars and rumors of wars. Yes, there are false Christ, but they're not fulfillment of the prophecy that Jesus talked about because that program has been, on, been put on hold. We're in the mystery program now until the rapture of the body of Christ. And another part of that then is that God's word, Colossians 1, I mentioned about the mystery there. Uh, Paul says, I've been given the mystery to fulfill the word of God or to complete it. He said in Ephesians 1, 8, that God hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And so what that means then is with God's word completed from 1 Corinthians 13 and from Ephesians chapter 4, we learn that once God's word is completed, spiritual gifts pass off the scene. And so then the things about direct revelations from God, visions, dreams that people have, and they say, God spoke to me in this dream or this vision. You know from Acts 2 that in the last days, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men, or your old men shall see visions, your young men shall dream dreams. I remember exactly, but it was a prophecy of Joel 2 that, G that Peter says this is being fulfilled today in Acts 2. And that is the last days of Israel's program, not the mystery program. And we don't need those visions and dreams today because God's already completed his work to us. So we just read and believe God's word. 1 Corinthians 1, around verse 21, verse 22 says the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. And so since we're in the Greek period today of salvation, then we've got wisdom. But if we're in Israel's program, then we would have the sign gifts, the signs being done. So what it shows you then is not only is prophecy not being fulfilled today, whatever is going on in Israel, God doesn't even recognize that as the nation of Israel. That's something that the God of this world, Satan, instituted through the United Nations, a satanic organization, and uh, starting the nation of Israel, Zionism to bring in the Antichrist. It's all part of Satan's policy of evil. God won't bring in Israel until Jesus' second coming. He's got to destroy the God of this world and, the, and his forces first. So then that also means since God's word is completed, there are no visions and revelations uh, from God. Um, you can have visions and revelations, but it's not God speaking to you. So where do they come from? Anyway, um, God's not doing that today. This is mystery, not prophecy. Thanks for watching.